Hey folks, this is Paul talking about A Course in Miracles. Uh, let's talk about immortality. And the reason I want to talk about this is because it's very important. The whole goal of A Course in Miracles or of any spiritual awakening path with its salt is to resurrect from death and return to life and to acknowledge that you have eternal life that when you were created by God God is immortal God is infinite God is unlimited and lives forever and having created you like himself from his own nature you extend his eternal life and he has given you eternal life in your creation as soon as you were created you inherited God's properties and you were created to live forever. You were given all of the absolute properties. So you are permanent, you are immortal, you are infinite, you are unlimited, you are endless, you are unchangeable, you are invulnerable, you are uh, flawless and perfect you can never die you can never be sick you can never be harmed you can't be changed in any way so reality is actually a changeless state which is true because it doesn't change the truth cannot be changed you have in order for something to be true <clears throat> it has to always be true it cannot be changing and flip-flopping and, and being conditional or based on whether something else applies or not. The truth is absolute and that means that it's always true. And that means reality is always the same. Reality is permanence. Reality is uh, constantly the same. And that means that it lasts forever. It's always. It is eternal. It is forever. And a part of those that property is that it, it doesn't experience change. It doesn't morph. It doesn't transform. It doesn't modify. It doesn't adjust. It doesn't fluctuate. It doesn't waver. It isn't uncertain or afraid. It doesn't have any um, ability to be, be modified. So when God creates you, you are placed in heaven as a permanent fixture. You are forever. It's like you're, you're, you're not just some very resistant, resilient thing. You are completely beyond the capability of change. Um, so God is changeless, reality is changeless, and what he creates is his will, and having been created by his will, nothing can oppose his will. His will is absolute, it is total, God is all-powerful, God has no opposite, and there is nothing that can do anything to his will. And therefore, if he has willed that you exist, you are put in place, you are permanent, you are a permanent fixture in heaven, and absolutely nothing can ever change that. God never changes his mind about you because he's not uncertain. God is, has total knowledge, so he's always <laughs> dedicated in the same way forever. So when he creates you, you are very certainly, very deliberately, very consistently and permanently created. And that gives you eternal life. It, it guarantees that you will always exist. You will live forever. And God's will has no way of being changed. God doesn't have a, an uncertainty or a, 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 a doubt or a, some kind of lack of power or some kind of changing his mind as if he didn't know what he was doing the first time. He completely is fully conscious, shall we say, 
of what he's doing and he deliberately creates you and you're there and that's a fact you are permanently a fact of reality now you've been created you're held in place by god's mind you are maintained in god's mind in his thoughts forever and you cannot be changed and the reason that you are immortal and the reason that you have eternal life it's not just that you are in and of yourself a permanent fixture you're immortal because of God you're immortal because God is the one who is causing you and his will forces you to be what you are he has he's the one who is producing you you are an effect of God you are one of his creations and it's his mind is maintaining you indefinitely and permanently so he holds and maintains the thoughts of his living beings his children in his mind forever and therefore because of the cause effect relationship where God is the cause of you he is causing you to live forever and he's giving you permanence he is giving you permanently he is always giving you he is guaranteeing that you will last forever um, and this gives you your immortality it gives you eternal life it is a, a gift from God it isn't something that is just oh I'm amazing and I am invulnerable by myself and nothing can touch me because of me my immortality is because of God your immortality and the fact that you have eternal life is because of him he is maintaining it he is the one who is protecting you he is he is constantly and permanently guaranteeing your existence and nothing in all of existence in the space-time in the universe on earth in heaven or anywhere has any power whatsoever to change God's mind about you God has never changed his mind about you um, so God is not that kind of a being or that kind of a mind he, he is certain he is absolutely clear he has total knowledge he knows exactly what he's doing he is um, perfect in his completely deliberate acts of creation that he is I am doing this and it is done and God's will is done and there's nothing that you can do about this there's nothing that anybody can do about this nothing in all the world that has even the slightest effect upon his will <coughs> and this gives you invulnerability so because you are permanent and because you are changeless because you are always true <clears throat> because you um, nothing can go against God's will and God is protecting you and, and ho holding you in suspended animation and he's giving you and sharing with you his own immortality his permanence he is sharing his eternity with you as eternity he's guaranteeing that nothing can ever happen to you so you cannot change and God doesn't change you and nothing else can change you there is no change in reality so what this does is it gives you <clears throat> uh, a nature where you cannot be attacked nothing real can be threatened that reality's permanence and its 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 absolute total power of God cannot be opposed. It cannot be assailed. You cannot be hurt. You cannot be offended. You can't be upset. You can't be made to be afraid. You can't be made sick. You can't be killed. You cannot die. You are endless. You are always permanently the same this is what it means when the course says I am still as God created me 
it means that you must still be exactly, precisely the, the, the brand new, pristine, perfectly created being that God created you to be. You must still be this because you haven't changed. You have not become anything. You haven't changed into anything. You haven't lost anything. You haven't adjusted. You haven't adapted. You haven't turned into someone else. You haven't become what you thought you were. You are not a body. You haven't turned into phys physicality. You haven't lost anything real. Uh, your real self is still exactly as God created it. So somewhere behind all these smokes and mirrors and these pretending to be something that you're not, you must still be the perfect original self, the first created uh, raw self, unmodified, that God put in place and is maintaining forever. You must still be that self right now. And that self cannot be changed by anything. So real because reality is permanent, <coughs> because it is absolute, because it is infinite and unlimited and endless, it literally has an, a built-in property of not being able to be attacked. Because it is endless and because it is always, it is just constantly there. And it, it's, it's like even beyond relative measurements of how much something can be hurt. It is completely unhurtable. The kingdom of God cannot be assailed. Um, <clears throat> so everything that's real, everything that God has created in the kingdom is there forever. And it has a quality to it, the, the strength of the spirit, which makes it literally impossible for there to be a change or an attacking effect or a modification or something making things different than they were, taking something away, replacing it, redoing it, rethinking it, any kind of change at all. <laughs> is absolutely impossible for this for the spiritual realm the spirit is permanent it has it has a laws of physics defying permanence to it it is so fixed and absolutely there <laughs> fully present that that sheer infinite strength of god prevents anything from ever happening to it. This is why the Course says nothing has ever touched the Son of God except God himself because God has protected his Son and it is God's infinite unopposable power that guarantees there will never be an attack on heaven. That Everything in heaven, everything of reality in God is forever and it has a this quality this law defying quality to it that it's always there it is rock solid it is more solid than a mountain it is more unchangeable than the the hardest materials <laughs> it is immortal it is absolutely unchangeable unbreakable can never malfunction it can never go wrong it can never be harmed. Um, <clears throat> it is absolutely beyond suffering. It cannot become anything. It cannot turn into anything. Nothing can happen to it against his will, against God's will. And God's will guarantees its continuation. And it, God maintains it in his mind with his thought, with his power. And nothing will ever 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 have even the tiniest speck of influence on God's reality. This is why the kingdom of God is perfect safety because in the kingdom in that state of absolute permanence you are 
perfectly safe forever. And this is also why there is nothing to be afraid of. Because if you know that you are permanent and immortal, you are certain because your certainty is a part of the the knowing that this is what is god is and this will never be changed because nothing can oppose the will of god and therefore you know you are totally locked in to safety forever nothing can change you nothing can happen to you nothing can cause you nothing can influence you upset you make you something turn you into something happen against your will or even remotely threaten you in any way and so you're totally safe and protected in god's love and that means you have no reason for fear because there is nothing to fear it also means that you are totally at peace because there is no fear because there is nothing to be afraid of because reality cannot be affected you as an immortal being can never be affected or changed or destroyed therefore that constancy and that permanence guarantees a state of peace where you are totally totally calm and happy and peaceful and joyful because you know you are totally safe nothing ever can change you doesn't matter what it is what it looks like even a freaking supernova explosion can have no effect on you whatsoever you are always there and it is that awareness of your eternal nature that guarantees peace that's why uh, nothing real can be threatened nothing unreal exists herein lies the peace of God the peace of God is based on the fact that nothing real can be threatened so if you can't ever be threatened and nothing can ever go wrong and nothing can ever attack you and nothing can make you sick or die and there's nothing to worry about and you're just completely literally bulletproof and you're um, <clears throat> an absolute permanent fixture in reality and you will last forever without the slightest decay the slightest degradation the slightest lack or falling apart or getting old or rotting or dying <laughs> then you will be peaceful because you you're in a state where you know i can't be changed if you can't be changed nothing can disturb you nothing can upset you nothing can disturb your peace and so the state of the awareness of your true nature knowing yourself as being an immortal eternal being protected by God forever, maintained by his strength, certified by his will, and made to be so permanent, not, not even you can do anything to change that. It guarantees your peace of mind. Because how, how could you have peace of mind if there was ever even a slight notion that something can happen to me something might affect me something could alter what I am something can change me something can happen some kind of power other than God's power some alien will that can seem to influence me and alter me and change what I am and therefore define redefine me and, and turn me into something that I don't want to be that it can oppose the will of God and that is a grounds for fear and grounds for not being peaceful and you can't be at peace when you believe that you can be changed and it all really comes down to can I be changed or can I not be changed am I permanent or am I temporary am I immortal or am I mortal is it possible for me to in any way have ever changed since I was created by God. Now, <clears throat> so the fact is, the fundamental starting fact is that God has created you to be immortal and you can never die. 
you cannot be changed in any way to any degree you are permanent you will live forever and so will everybody that you know everyone will always be together because we're nobody can ever be destroyed this is the good news this is what sets you free this is the, what you have to remember this is what should become your identity you should be identifying with your spirit identifying with your soul recognizing who you are remembering your true nature acknowledging that only the truth is true only God's truth is true only your immortality is true you cannot change or be changed this has to become your whole identity your whole belief about yourself your your knowing of your certainty and your fearlessness that if love and fear are opposites then when you are in fear you're not loving your immortal self and you're in a state of fearing because you believe that you can be attacked and changed so to be immortal is to be love so your loving immortal self is invulnerable now <clears throat> Where we want to go next let's say your mind uh, is free and is capable of belief and your mind can has the power to deny itself God has given you free will and he's given you permanent freedom and part of that freedom includes <clears throat> the ability the freedom to use your freedom against itself to try to even though this isn't possible and it doesn't produce anything real to you, you are free to to misuse your freedom you are free to try to will that you don't have free will you're free to try to believe that it's possible for you to not have a will so as the course says your mind has this power because God gave it this power but your mind can also deny what it creates it can it can choose to believe that it isn't itself or that you are not yourself it can choose to believe that um, you are free to imprison yourself um, it can choose to believe that you are you're able to deny God's will which means it doesn't mean that you can stop God's will it doesn't mean you can change God's will it doesn't mean that you can change who you are or that you can take away your immortal state but it does mean that you you're still free to believe that you can you're still free to to use denial which is which actually implies that you haven't done what you think you've done but you you are free to try to do this and when you try to do this it cannot produce anything real and you cannot actually change God's will and you cannot actually make yourself stop being immortal you cannot actually end your existence you can't destroy yourself but you you are free to use your mind against itself to try to not have mind to try to deny who you are to try to pretend that you're not immortal to uh, disguise yourself and this puts your mind into what the Course says is kind of like a state of sleeping where your mind is trying to refuse to create it's trying not to extend God it's trying to deny that God is your father it's trying to disown God and say that I'm not an effect of God that I haven't been created that I don't really exist and it is a self-destructive attempt to uh, suggest that you don't have reality you don't exist you're not immortal 
and that is a, a false belief and a mistake and it doesn't actually change any facts but to your mind it seems to change the facts and you are you now develop perception and interpretation of the facts <laughs> which leads to you believing that you can be separate from God, that you can be separate from yourself, that you can be less than whole, that you could have a nature which isn't immortal, that you can reject eternal life, that you can interrupt creation, that you can bring an end to existence, that there can be an opposite to God's will, that you can oppose your, you can use your own will to oppose itself and cancel it out which must mean that you're that you're willing nothing and so you will that there be nothing or you will a nothingness you will not to will you become unwilling and that puts your freedom of will into a kind of prison state and so you're only within your mind and not in God's mind you try to deny reality and shut out yourself and God and go into denial and this is a, re a rejection of the truth and that puts your mind into a belief system that's like a whole other alternative reality almost like a whole system of thought a lower order reality where you believe in and try to give reality and truth to this belief that it's possible for you to change, possible for you to not be permanent, possible for you to create yourself and that God isn't your creator, possible for you to not have inherited anything, possible for you to not be absolute, possible for you to suffer, possible for you to be afraid and lose your peace, to be attacked by a will that's opposite to God's will, and that you therefore have the ability to destroy God. Now you're in the authority problem thinking that you have power over God and that you can change his creations and therefore you can change yourself or your mind's awareness of yourself that you can now believe that you have become something that you're not because now you're thinking I can create nothingness I can I can change reality I can turn myself into something I can define myself and through this process we make up and invent and hallucinate and believe in and invest in as if trying to convince ourselves that it's true a whole world a whole mind space of illusions and untruth and the seeming appearance of the opposite of God and basically the making of death the suggestion that you can change reality you you're not permanent you're not absolute you don't have eternal life you don't last forever you're not always the same you have changed since God created you therefore you have stopped being innocent permanently innocent you've stopped being invulnerable you've stopped being immortal and therefore you didn't start to envision for yourself that you have become mortal and you have now um, become open to change that you have now considered it possible that you as a real permanent fixed being an immortal being can somehow be influenced modified adjusted changed into something that you're not that you can become something else that you can learn and now you've taught yourself a bunch of things that are not true and this idea that you can uh, be less than you are that you can be limited instead of unlimited that you can um, be be therefore 
reduced and made smaller and little and therefore weakened and therefore that you don't have the strength and the power of the spirit and because of this whole movement into insanity and hell into sp it, it produces space-time space being the idea that everything is not here now <laughs> and, and what is here isn't there and it isn't everywhere and therefore everything is nowhere that is space and time is the idea that eternity doesn't exist and that what has always been has come to an end and what is here now will not last forever time is the idea of death that you are going to be changed against your will that you're capable of changing that you can even become something other than God created and therefore you can decide who and what you are and make up identities and now it's it's possible for you to identify your sense of self who and what am I with things that you are not such as the, the narrowing of your mind the rejection of wholeness the rejection of being unlimited the attempt to not be everywhere always has narrowed you and has produced this sense of being separated off this rejection of sharing has made you selfish this um, disowning of your unlimited nature has produced this idea in your mind that you are very limited and you're small and you're weak and you're powerless and you are frail and you are susceptible and you are vulnerable and you can be attacked and you can be hurt and damaged and you can become sick you can die you can be killed that whole idea of separateness and isolation and exclusion and the denial of reality has formed a picture in your mind of a self that has all these qualities these vulnerable qualities these attackable qualities it's something that can change something that can become something something that can grow something that can die and that is the body the but the human body and all other bodies including planets and stars are pictures in the mind of the Son of God the world is a picture of the crucifixion of God's Son is a they are physical pictures three-dimensional pictures images in your mind of who you think you are the Course in Miracles says the body is is what is a picture of what you think you are what you have tried to make of yourself what you've tried to become you like you're trying on different shoes this lifetime I'm gonna have this body and this lifetime I'm gonna try that body and I'm gonna try and be this body and try and have that person and and the mind is narrowing itself and 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 condensing itself and resisting which produces a, a condensing like a, a build-up of pressure and it produces what appears to be solid materials and this is what has produced physical matter it is the end result of this process of denying your immortal nature it led to and cascaded down into the fearful resistance of life of eternal life producing a picture of things that die a picture of something that seems to be life that is not fucking life the physical world is not alive it is a dream of death it is a picture in which the forms of life the life forms seem to symbolize life because they change 
not because they're permanent, not because they're changeless, not because they can never grow, not because they can't become anything, not because part of their nature is temporarily hidden and it shows up later. But we have this stuff now, this condensed mind thought forms that pretend to be life and everybody thinks this is life physical nature is biology chemistry things that constantly constantly change and they are therefore deceptive because anything that changes is not being permanently truthful so if something can grow it is not always the same how can it be true if it doesn't stay the same it's like it's changing its tune and it's changing its story over time and here it is saying this and then oh, a year later it says this and now it's saying that and they're not consistent it's always shifting and changing that is not truth that is not reality that is a totally conditional fickle relative temporary flux of bullshit spewed out as a universe or a seeming universe that we're calling space-time filled with and populated with images of death <laughs> the body is clearly a device for separation masquerading as life and everybody in the body level seems to think this is life stuff that changes stuff that ends, stuff that dies, stuff that can be attacked, stuff that is not immortal, stuff that isn't permanent, stuff that doesn't always exist, stuff that you cannot maintain forever with the mind of God, stuff that can be destroyed. If there's any kind of changeability, it is not eternal life. Eternal life means changelessness. It means it has to stay the same forever in order to not have any ways that it could stop being the way it is. If it's even possible to change it, modify it, influence it, distort it, destroy it, attack it, harm it in any way, if it can ever be changed in any way at all, it's possible for it to be destroyed and therefore it can't be eternal so real life is eternal life it is the only kind of life that life is in heaven there is no life outside of heaven eternal immortal permanent existence is life so if something has life and it continues living it should continue living forever. That's what it means to be alive, is to always exist. If something can happen to these things and it has a vulnerability and it can become weakened and you can hurt it and destroy it, obviously it cannot last forever. So it doesn't have eternal life and must be mortal. So all the things around us physically, everything that your body can see and touch and feel and smell and taste and everything else and hear, it is not alive. This is not eternal life. Planet Earth, therefore, because it has formed and it changes and it's constantly shifting and it's never the same and things grow and they die and everything's temporary and it can be attacked and it can be destroyed the world can be killed it could be blown up by a supernova this is a fact of space and time physics it cannot be of God it can't be a real thing it can't exist it can't be the truth because if eternal life and immortality and endlessness is the will of God per his protection and his power causing it to last forever and here we are with um, as the course says the world of time where everything must die 
where all things end. <laughs> the time will come when all things visible will have an end. An end is an idea of change. It is something's going to change and it's not going to be the same as it was. This is the idea of time. As the Course says, the time rules the body completely and everything in time and space can end and can begin and can change and transform and shift and therefore it is not the truth, it is not absolute. It is sometimes this and then it becomes something else. It is a constant permanent lie. It is deception, it is a temptation because the mind was trying to deceive itself. So the Course in Miracles says that you made the body in attempting to deceive yourself. So the, the, just the mere nature of physical biology, the, the presence of matter, matter is the opposite of life. It is a, a separation device. As the Course in Miracles says, the body is clearly a device for separation and therefore it does not exist. This is what a brick wall looks like, coming between something that is supposed to be one and shared and everywhere and continuous. The body's eyes are blinded by sight of form. They were made not to see. Real seeing, real vision, should be able to be able to see anything anywhere at any time. That is unlimited vision, full vision, can see anything, anywhere, anywhere. Physical sight based on fucking photons, the light, <laughs> the illusion of light bounces off of things and is repelled. There's no repulsion in reality. They are repelled and rejected and the light particles bounce and then they get bounced back out and then they eventually come into your eyes and your eyes look at this, the outside surface of nothing, the Course says, that the, they stop at the outside surface of nothing and cannot see beyond it. So because you can't see me now, that is blindness. If I can stop your vision from being unlimited, that proves that you cannot see everywhere, always, all, all the time. So physical sight is not unlimited sight. It is actually a very, very tiny, confined, narrow, little bit of sight, an illusion of sight that is instantly stopped by any physical object. And the separation devices which are death and not life that come between you and yourself and God as the world stands as a block before the, sa the face of Christ, it is, is getting in the way and shutting off and separating and blocking. So physical sight is a blockage to sight. It is not sight. These eyes made not to see will never see. And this is all part of the making of this illusion of, I'm not a mortal. I can't have access to everything. I'm cut off from reality. I'm in a prison state. I'm locked in a body. I am trapped and isolated. I am limited. I am confined. I am separated off. I am made to be physical. And now the mind believes that it is this condensed separateness. It's a bodily identity and a sense of self, a sense of who and what am I, that is anything other than unlimited and immortal, that is very much a belief in limitation, mortality, susceptibility, vulnerability, weakness, unwholeness, unholiness, um, guilt and sin and fear, sickness and death, something that can be destroyed and attacked. As the Course says, you are not sick and you cannot die because you are immortal. 
but you can confuse yourself, your sense of self, with things that do. Things that do are the body and the forms and the plants and the houses and the buildings and the planets. They are not eternal. They are formed. They are forms. They change their forms. Form is death. So, A Course in Miracles also says, Jesus says, you're playing a game of death. It also says that um, this world, physical world, bodies, the world of sin, is a place where the eternal come to question who it is that they are to doubt themselves, to reinvent themselves, to try to become something, to have a dream of being something that you, that you were not created to be, to try to make you something of yourself that was not given by God. That everybody is just trying to constantly turn themselves into something instead of just being as they were created. Um, so he's saying that you, you play a game of death. <laughs> so we are really immortal beings who live forever. We have eternal life already. What you really are, if you could be fully aware and tuned into to the, the real, raw, unfiltered, unchanged, unmodified you, your soul, which God created to live forever, your identity as Christ, <clears throat> you would know that you can never die, you can never be sick, you cannot suffer, nothing can happen to you, nobody can do anything to you, the world can't attack you, people can't be to blame because nothing can hurt you. The world can't do anything. It can't cause you, it can't change you, it can't modify you, it can't make you upset, it can't make you sick, it can't make you die. Because you're immortal, you live forever. So as immortal beings who are still immortal and never stop being immortal, in our minds, we are playing a game of believing that that's not true as a state of denial that doesn't change the fact that we're immortal, but nevertheless makes us believe and try to convince ourselves to deceive ourselves into believing that we're not that anymore, that somehow that's we're shutting it out of awareness, we're hiding from it, we're pretending it's not true. We're lying to ourselves in order to play this game of I'm going to pretend that I can die, I'm going to pretend that I can be attacked and I can be hurt and I'm going to suffer and I'm going to make sure I'm sick and I'm going to bring upon myself as much fucking shit as possible so that I'm going to, I'm going to believe that I am not an immortal spirit and that I've narrowed down and become this tiny weak little piece of shit stuck in the body, identifying in a, as, as a body, as a, as a limited thing, resonating with the body, uh, believing that the physical body is myself, and then because my mind is sick, believing that it is not in, in its normal natural state, <laughs> believing that it is unlike its true nature, that it has changed and it is suffering and it is having nightmares and it is full of guilt and it has become sick and it's sick of itself. Identifying with the body as a body psychologically, this is myself, this is what I'm like. The mind is now associated with the body and confused with it 
and your sense of self and your sense of identity mm -hmm. seems similar to bodies because the, the sense of bodily identification or body identity is, is this narrowing and this shutting out and this isolating and confining in the mind that happens to t eventually produce form the the expression of the resistance against God showing up as physical matter. The world was made as an attack on God. The body is a separation device. So then your mind thinks it is this, it's like this. The mind gets confused with the body. The mind is clearly against itself is against your true nature and therefore it's attacking itself and in this state of self-attack where you are also identified and mixed with the body and believing confused that you are a body if you as the mind are sick and believing that you're mortal you will carry guilt and you will say this body is sick and is mortal because it's i think it's me it's mine it's this what i am what i'm made of and if you think you're a physical body now your mind is sick and it is attaching the sickness to the body seeing the body as sick as itself and this is also going to attack the body and now the physical body is going to show symptoms of sickness. Sickness is but a little death, a form of vengeance, not yet total. So now you have, by introducing change, changeability, you've introduced all sickness. The notion that you can be modified and that you could stop existing. You've introduced all death, all forms of death, death every single possible way that it can happen has arisen within the idea I could come to an end I could be stopped I could be changed I could stop carrying on as I am I could I could change the will of God I can stop being permanent and so this has produced the belief in mortality the belief in death is the mind is trying to destroy itself trying to destroy the Son of God trying to destroy God's creation this is why the world was made as an attack on God physical bodies are an attack on God they are not yourself they're not what you are they're not what you're made of or what you're like the nature of the body is completely opposite to the nature of the mind your mind is supposed to be infinite and everywhere and unlimited and shared and whole and perfect and permanent and endless and eternal the body is the exact opposite of that idea it is limited temporary attackable uh, susceptible can be hurt can be damaged can be destroyed and therefore is totally unlike the mind in its normal nature so when your mind identifies itself in a body-like way and attaches to the body and believes it is a body and you see yourself as form and as flesh and bones and are confusing yourself with things that die with ideas of death your mind is very unnatural and it's sick so the mind wants to be everywhere it wants to share it wants to extend it wants to create unlimited power unlimited creation unlimited sharing the body is a separation device it's an attempt not to share and to be selfish and to be isolated and special and different and unique and not like the rest and changeable so the body is totally opposite in its nature to your immortal self so your mind needs to disidentify from all this collection of characteristics that are very similar to what we would call a body this very limited 
space located, separated off, withdrawn, small, powerless, uh, weak and frail, attackable little thing. We need to get our sense of self to reunite with and identify with our immortal true nature, the nature of the soul. The mind and the soul have to be reconnected. Or in other words, um, re-identified to become one. Your mind needs to become one with your soul instead of the body. Uh, as the Course says, a mind and body cannot both exist because they're opposite. So, the spiritual path in A Course in Miracles is you learning that you're not a body, I'm not a body, I am free, you learning that all of the characteristics of death and mortality and suffering, all forms of sickness, including physical sickness, all attacks, all murderous intentions, all guilt and sin, all grounds for fear, lack of peace, has to be questioned and uprooted, and your mind has to re-expand to incorporate and integrate the rest of the sonship to rejoin in sharing everything and being one with everyone so that you can leave the realm of bodies no longer seeing yourself as a body or in a body or having a body and return to heaven where you live a real life that hasn't stopped because this world is not life. This is not your home. This is not where you belong. This is an alien world in which the body is an alien and its nature is alien to yourself. It is totally, totally, totally opposite to the nature of God's kingdom. Earth, heaven, which is heaven's opposite in every way this world in which everything takes a direction exactly opposite to what is true. And it's opposite because this whole world, all of space and time and all physical matter and bodies and planets and stuff, has all, is all contained within the idea, I'm going to deny my immortal nature and I'm going to pretend that I can die. I'm going to believe that I can be separate. I'm going to try to make it seem as though I am something that can suffer, something that can be attacked, something that can be killed, something that can die. It's a belief in death. Death is the central illusion from which all others stem. Um, death is the last illusion to be overcome because the whole thing, this whole system, is a dream of dying. Sickness is an attempt to prove you can be hurt. You as an immortal being are trying to prove that you can be hurt. So whenever you have sickness, sickness is a defense against the truth. The truth is that you are immortal and you can never be sick. And right now, your immortal self is not sick. Your immortal self cannot ever become sick. So secretly, behind your sickness, whatever kind of sickness it is, physical, mental, emotional, doesn't matter, any kind of dysfunction is an illusion. As Jesus says in the Course, sickness is an illusion. It is not real because behind it you are still an immortal being. Your soul is still perfect, unchanged, undefiled, undamaged, pristine, new, exactly as it was when it was created by God. It hasn't changed a bit. 
you haven't stopped being as God created you, but you think you have. So your mind is confused, but yourself is still perfect. So your mind is still is blocking the awareness of love's presence and is blocking your immortal nature and therefore is inducing a mental dream in which you imagine entire worlds of bullshit where nothing is true. As of course the miracle says, nothing the world believes is true. <laughs> Nothing so blinding as perception of form. Everything, everything physical is an appearance of an illusion. It's something appearing to be something that it is not. Bodies appearing to be alive, even though their nature is utterly opposite to life, to eternal immortal life their constant change and their growth and their hair loss and their pooping and eating and blocked vision and sensing the world. Only the body makes the world seem real. The body is not the means by which re the real world can be seen. <laughs> the body is not in touch with reality and it cannot experience reality. It is made of separateness. It is an idea of of a rejection of reality. So the body is an illusion. As the Course says, the body is a dream. And the environment of the body, without the body there is no world, <laughs> nor is there a body without the world, both of them they're a dream. This is a dream world, a dream of death. It is not reality. So everything, every single thing in the physical world is a lie. It is a deception. It is an illusion. It's something appearing to be something that it's not. It pictures impossible things. If it's true that you are immortal, and here you are seeming to be a body, and your body has a broken arm. Can it be true? If you're a mortal and nothing can change you, nothing can hurt you, nothing can happen to you, nothing can attack you, nothing, there can't be any accidents, there can't be any abuse, there can't be murders, there can't be destruction or war, or running into objects and being damaged. If you're a mortal, can it be true that you have a broken arm and say here you are with your broken arm and you're seeing it and it's physically looking like it's broken there's damage and there's bruising and there's pain and it looks like it's there <laughs> and you can touch it and you can look at it and you can sniff it if you want uh, it's appearing to exist and it seems like proof, physical, tangible, measurable proof that people would look at and point to and say, you really do have a broken arm. But can it be true if you are fucking immortal? If you are unchangeable? undamageable, unaffected, it's impossible for you to ever become sick, nothing can break you. How can it be true that that is true and the broken arm is true at the same time? So here's what you have to do, you have to get these two opposites and you have to contrast them and compare them and put them next to each other. Because what the ego likes to do is it likes to hide the facts in the darkness of shadows so that you won't have these two conflicting totally opposite truths ever near to each other. This is why it uses projection because it wants to deny, disown, dissociate and project and get rid of and distance itself from 
the incompatible stuff such as all oh, the guilt and the, the unworthiness and the blame and the shame tries to put it on someone else so that it maintains a gap between what's in here in the mind and what seems to be over there in someone else it belongs to them it's associated with them it's, it's theirs they're the one that's guilty not me so that the guilt and the innocence will not be allowed to be close to each other because if you bring these irreconcilable opposites next to each other in your awareness and you look at them side by side so close that you can't help but notice how they are not the same and this one is clearly totally opposite to this one and this is claiming something that this one completely refutes this one believes something that this totally opposes it should become very very obvious and clear to your mind that they can't both be true so what the mind has to do is it has to learn to correctly identify and categorize everything into two categories one of the categories is the truth and one is the false one is real and one is unreal one really exists one does not really exist and you've got to decide to put everything in and the course in miracles says you need to do this that you have to use contrasts you have to contrast and compare everything and compare it to god's truth if it is in accord with his will if it lines up with his truth you put it in the true box if it is out of accord with his will and it's not of an immortal nature you have to put it in the false box and the mind therefore sorts out and becomes clear about what is true and what is not true and you need to do this because if you don't do this you are confusing the true and the false you're making no distinction between them and that means you don't know what anything is it means you cannot tell the difference between reality and unreality and that means you're insane so in order to undo your insanity you have to be willing to separate out the true from the false you've got to be able to recognize what reality is and say that, okay that's the reality and this stuff isn't that's the only way to become clear about what's true so this the entire process of a course in miracles and waking up is all about you sorting out what bucket am i going to put this in is this the truth is it a lie is this real is it unreal can it be true if this is true can it be false if this is false blah blah so that you get to a point where um as jesus says in the course the mind puts everything into one of two categories this is in the manual for teachers i think um in sorting out everything that's coming from the external world everything that you seem to experience from the external world is put into one category it is all unreal so everything physical everything of the body everything to do with physical sickness all states of death every physical law laws of physics or biology and chemistry space and time is all put into the fourth box because when you compare it to the nature of immortal permanent existence it is totally fucking opposite it is nothing like it earth which is opposite to heaven in every way everything in heaven lives forever everything on earth dies and turns into shit <laughs> Uh, therefore you have to learn that everything in the physical world is an illusion 
an appearance of things testifying and proving the proof of sin, the irreversibility of bullshit, trying to, trying to make a claim, it's trying to convince you, it's a deception, it's a temptation, it's trying to say, this is possible, death is possible, sickness is possible, breakage, damage, destruction is possible, things can be hurt, things can be attacked, things can grow, things can die, things can get old. It's possible for you to gain, it's possible for you to lose, it's possible for there to be separateness, it's possible for you to kill, it's possible for you to be killed. The world, the physical world of form, is trying to testify to this all the time. Every single object everywhere in the whole freaking universe is trying to hold this picture of crucifixion in front of your face to say the mind of the Son of God has identified itself as being a physical object and it is destroyed and it's destructible and therefore you as the Son of God can be killed and the, the death of your body proves that God's Son has been killed off. So if you remember the ego is really the idea of not having a self it is really an illusion of a self pretending to be a self as a selfish concentrated fearful self that really is the denial of your real god-given self that is your soul that is immortal so the ego is the idea of the rejection of yourself the denial of life the worshipping of death and the attempt to destroy yourself, which is why it wants you dead. The ego is not a self, it is the Antichrist, it is the lack of self, or you could say the lack of love, which is the idea of sin. So, <clears throat> or darkness. Darkness is a lack of light. Um, So, when you wake up in the morning and you look around you with your lying eyes, <laughs> everything you see with your physical sight is a lie, it's an illusion trying to say death is possible, decay is possible misalignment, dirtiness, uh, degradation, corrosion, entropy, things breaking, falling apart, things getting lost, things being in conflict, uh, things not fitting, th <laughs> things going rusty, whatever it is, all these various many, many forms of death, many, many forms of one idea, stuff can be changed stuff doesn't last, stuff ends, stuff isn't what it was before, stuff is going to turn into something different, there's going to be some kind of a conversion, some change is happening. And so every freaking thing that you see and feel and touch and interact with in this world is trying, it was made to tempt you to believe that you are a body, to tempt you to believe that this is the truth, that this world and its nature, which is devouring, destroying, corruption and death and misery, <laughs> is somehow the truth. Somehow this is reality, this is real, this is what it's like to be natural and normal. And the Course in Miracles says you have to question this and you have to become the ones who recognize that this is not natural. And your nature is to be like the nature of the Kingdom of God, which is immortal and endless and never changes, such that to the world you will seem to be unnatural. You are one of the unnatural ones because you have a nature which is not like this 
world. Your real nature is that you are immortal and it's re a real immortality, not some fiction, not some Hollywood story, not some people with swords and weapons. It is God's given fact, permanent, irrefutable, unchangeable, absolute power of will. God's expression of himself, God's emanation of permanence and creation that has established you to live forever. That's your real nature. So, it, so you need to get a real good grip on that and have a good sense of what is that nature? What am I like? What is my soul like? What are, What's true of me? What is true of my spiritual self, my real self? Who am I really? I am not a body. What am I? What are you? You are not something that can die. You're not capable of sickness. So going back to Jesus saying, we're playing a game of death. He says, you know, you who see yourself as weak and suffering and frail and in pain and misery, hear this. All power in heaven and earth has been given to you. There is nothing that you cannot do. So like we're, we're, we're these weird <laughs> immortal beings who are pretending to suffer, pretending that we can be sick pretending that we can change, that we can turn into something. We're pretending that the world can affect us. We're pretending that uh, other people can cause us to become upset or hurt. We're suggesting that there are causes in the world that can make what we are die. That we are under those laws, somehow there's an alien will and a power beyond ourselves that has power over us, that can change who we are, dictate our nature, change us, define us, adjust us, modify our feelings, make us upset, force us to suffer. This can't be true because <laughs> you're immortal. So if you are immortal and, and in particular you cannot be changed. All of the games that we play, where we're trying to portray ourselves as a sick and suffering you, or weak and vulnerable, or victimized, hurt and offended and upset, sickened, or made to be sick, or I've become sick, or I caught a sickness off someone, or there was something going around, or there's environmental toxins, or whatever these bullshit. I am the effect of the dream. It has power over me, it's causing me against my will, and I'm helpless and I can't do anything about it. This whole helpless, innocent victim, face of innocence, Oh, poor me, I'm dying against my will. Absolute deception is a game that we're playing where we're lying and we're trying to convince ourselves and other people that we're not immortal beings, that, I'm, that you're not yourself, which means that you don't know who you are. You So as The Course of Miracles says, that the only goal the only thing you need to do, as I said in a previous video, is know thyself. If you really, really knew what you are, what you're like, your true immortal nature, you are certain, therefore, because certainty is a part of permanence, you could not be shaken, you could not ever claim that anybody can do anything to you. You would never believe that the world has a power that can hurt you. You would be utterly invulnerable. Jesus is reminding me of nothing in the world can bring oppression. Nothing can cause you pain or make you weak or sick or suffer or die. 
but it is you who have the power to dominate everything you see merely by recognizing who you are. If you were to know yourself as an immortal, invulnerable, perfect, unassailable, unattackable, unaffectable, unchangeable being, you would know nothing in the world can oppress you, nothing can make you sick, nothing can give you pain, nothing can make you suffer, nothing can make you die. Because what you are is a spirit being that lives forever. That is your true self. And we're not we're also not talking about I know some a lot of people don't really have an idea of what the soul is. Don't really have an idea of it, so we just imagine maybe it's this sort of wispy vague th th of energy or something that just sort of goes off and isn't really a false self. It's just some sort of little essence or something. But your soul is a full, complete being. It is the whole of you. It is all of yourself, including everything that God gave you to be, your whole mind, your personality, whatever that is, your expressiveness, your decision making, your ability to think, to love, to feel, to share, to create, all part of a full being. The soul has not only been created perfect, it has been fully created. It, there is no lack in it. It is not a lack of a self. It is not a lack of attributes. It is all of you and it is only what you are. So, <clears throat> you have to re-identify with it, such that, as Jesus says, I have nothing that does not come from God. We all have everything that comes from God, but as Jesus says, the difference between him and you is that he has nothing else. He has only what he's been given by God to share. He is only what he is, only what was created, only what was given to, for him to be. And he's still exactly as God created him. He doesn't need to be anything else. He's not lacking anything. He doesn't need to become anything. He is only, purely, perfectly the original being that God created. The only difference between Jesus and you is that you also have tacked on additional bullshit that is not from God, is not of God, is not immortal. Senses of identity that are false, beliefs that are mistaken, uh, narrowing of your mind that is unnatural, uh, producing physical illusions that are impossible, uh, trying to create physical proof of sin, all the things that we're doing in addition to our immortal self that denies it, that denies that we inherited everything from God and that we need nothing else. And so we think that we have made something of ourselves. We think that we have made another self, which is really a lack of self. We think that we've made an ego, which is not a self. We think we have changed God's creation. The, like in the world, you, everybody's trying to become something. Following a spiritual path, learning, growing, trying to achieve, trying to find success, trying to get stuff accumulate, trying to become something, trying to have a social standing or a reputation, uh, trying to redefine yourself, trying to turn your body into a different condition so that you are different somehow, changing your hair, um, all these things that we all do that are all attempts to identify with as a body and to then change it to try to change who you are, to become. So Jesus says in the Course in Miracles that you are changeless, but you've, you've believed in change. 
And because you've believed in change, changing from one thing to another is not a real change. It is just staying within the realm of change and changing again and changing again, never getting out of changing. And that the only real change is a change of mind in which you decide to reject change and you get out of change, out of changeability and return to changelessness, that that's the only real change that your mind can make to return to resuming your perfect function of creation in heaven in which you do not change ever again. So stop changing. <laughs> All these ways that we keep trying to become something when the fact is God already gave you everything you needed. See, it's an arrogant thing to suggest that you need to change and that you have changed because that's like saying God didn't create you perfect. If God didn't create you perfectly, with perfection, to last forever and to never break down, <clears throat> that's what you're insinuating when you say, I am sick and I'm suffering and I'm upset and I am sad and I'm guilty and I'm afraid and I'm um, unworthy and all this stuff. This is all blasphemous <laughs> against God's will. This is a belief against the truth. Sickness is a defense against the truth. It's like an attempt to say, I'm an immortal being, so I'm going to pretend that I can be sick and put on a show of a fake death. I'm going to fake my own death by pretending that I'm a body, which I'm not, and I'm going to destroy the body, make it look dead, and then, if, then I'm going to blame it on the world and say something in the world caused this anything other than my mind sick bodies remain accusers and this dead body is going to prove that the world has caused death of god's son i'm going to get away with murdering it and, and everybody's going to be convinced that i have ended that i've been destroyed that my life has come to a stop and i'm going to pull off this big lie because that's what we're doing. We're playing a game of pretending to kill ourselves. It's a game of suicide, but you, what you are cannot be killed. So it's a game of faking that you're committing suicide through self-attack, secret of salvation, you're doing this to yourself, self-attack, pretending that you can attack yourself, making illusions in order to make it appear that something is true that isn't possible, producing bodies and forms that seem to be destructible and damaged to try to testify and tempt you to believe and be deceived that you're pulling off what you're claiming you can do, that you actually can kill yourself so that you can pretend that death is true and pretend that sickness is possible. And this is all a big lie. Everybody's being dishonest. Everybody is faking it. Everybody who is sick wants to be sick. There's plenty of material in the Course in Miracles that says those who are sick do not love themselves. Because if they loved themselves, they would heal themselves. Because to love is to be immortal. So if you are rejecting your immortality, you're saying, I believe I am mortal and that I can be sick. So that's not loving yourself because you're, you're attacking your immortality. My attack thoughts are attacking my invulnerability. So we're then trying to insinuate that what God created can be destroyed and that you are destructive and not creative. So then we portray the body as being sick on purpose. There are many, many statements 
words that say that sickness is a choice, that you choose it. You make a decision, you put it in place, you do it really quickly, and then you make it look like you didn't do it. And you use denial and you shut it out and then the body is suffering and you're looking for causes as if you didn't do it. As all part of the plan, all part of the bullshit, part of the story, the deception, the self-deception, sickness is a, an attempt to lie about who you are. It's a false representation of yourself. It's a way of trying to make yourself suffer, even though you cannot really suffer. So it's a belief that you're not yourself. And by believing that you're not as God created you, which is incapable of sickness, by believing that you're not yourself, you reject eternal life. And there is the rejection of life that shows up as forms of sickness and the physical body shows forms of death because it is a rejection of life. So to heal the sickness, which is a mental illness, all sickness is mental illness, it is a sickness is an identity problem. It's the authority problem. It's you believing you can do something that you cannot do. You believing something is possible that is not possible. It is a tiny mad idea. It is the idea that you can sin, that, that reality can be sinned against, that you can therefore attack and be attacked, that you are therefore weak and vulnerable and you can suffer and die. It is a denial of who you are. So in order to be true to yourself, you have to own up to being an immortal being. To be true to yourself, you have to know yourself as God created you. You have to acknowledge your soul, recognize the spirit, know that only God's truth is true. Nothing else is true. Nothing real can be threatened and you are real. You can't be threatened you can't be sick, you cannot die. So if, if anybody is seeming to have a sickness, and here we probably mean either mental sickness or a physicalized expression where the Course says all forms of sickness are, uh, even unto death, physical death, are physical expressions of the fear of waking. So what that means is that by being, rejecting immortality and going away from love into fear, away from awakening, because awakening is the awareness of the truth, it is nothing more than the recognition of what is really true and what is false, having these two categories and being totally clear about which is which correctly putting the false things in the false category psychologically and getting all the true stuff in the true category and remembering the body cannot see the truth so the stuff in the true category your immortal nature is pretty much a belief in things that you cannot see the holy spirit cannot be seen and so on uh, miracles are taken on faith I forgot what I was going to say. Um, to heal the sickness that we get into on purpose as a lie, we've got to be able to um, awaken to the awareness of what is really true. And that means reclaiming I am an immortal being. I will live forever. I can't be sick. I can't die. Nothing can happen to me. I am fixed. I am unchangeable. I can't be modified. No one can affect me. And in this world, while you're having bodies, while you're having perception, 
forgiveness is based on your immortality because your immortality forgiveness is a symbol of heaven um, so your forgiveness is the recognition that there is no sin for example there's no sin because nothing real can be attacked because everything real is immortal so recognizing there can't even have been a sin because the reason why is because reality is an immortal state so anything that appears to have sinned can't be true can't be real can't have happened forgiveness recognizes that what you think your brother did has not occurred literally never really occurred not possible no one has ever sinned against you you have never sinned against God in that recognition looking at the truth perceiving the truth is to look at your immortal nature in the kingdom of God It's to recognize that you're Christ that you are unassailable if you are immortal then no one can have done anything to you if you are immortal people cannot have affected you if you are immortal you cannot be sick if you're immortal you can't be threatened you can't be upset you can't be made to suffer you can't be damaged uh, you can't be offended so if you're in states where you are in any way giving away power to the world or to other people giving causation to the dream believing that the world has power to do things to you or that you are at the effect of the world you're a victim of the world if you believe that in any form any of the ways that you think this person did this to me and that person did that and these things are happening to me and I can't stop this and I don't have power over that this is all you forgetting who you are it's, your, it's you saying I no longer know myself I'm now questioning who I am I've, I'm doubtful about who I am I'm not certain of who I am so I've gone into questioning which is fear and now I'm unsure of myself <laughs> And I'm not sure whether or not I'm a mortal. I don't really know if I'm invulnerable. So now I'm entertaining possibilities that such and such a person has just attacked me. And such and such a thing just happened to me. And the world is making me suffer. And this thing happening over here is capable of killing me. And I'm threatened by this. And here's a danger. And here's a lack of safety. And here's something to disturb my peace because I've forgotten who the heck I am if I've, I've lost sight of the truth I've forgotten that I am immortal I've slipped on the slippery slope of hell and I've started to lose my footing come off my center I've moved away from myself I'm in denial and now I'm projecting and now <laughs> and then you get into the whole ego projection crap and now you're believing you're victimized and you're weak and you're susceptible and the world's affecting you and now you've got to forgive them and do all this stuff to try to get your peace of mind back ultimately it's it's as jesus says everyone is looking for himself and the power and the glory that he thinks he's lost you're, you're trying to figure out who the fuck are you what is true of you? Are, you? are you this thing, this identity, this collection of concepts, this, this narrowed version of you that can change, that can suffer, that can die, that can be upset by something, that people could topple you, that just someone's wrong look at you can change who you are it's like all the ego emotions all of your reactions is your mind suggesting <clears throat> that something out there is causing you to change against your will and therefore you're being made to be modified internally 
and these internal modifications are upset feelings so this bad hierarchy of illusions oh you've got cancer and you're gonna die bullshit is over here threatening you and it's suggesting you should be upset about this and therefore it seems to be putting upset feelings in you but if you're having these upset feelings because you have bought the bullshit and you've forgotten that you're immortal your identity is wrong <laughs> you don't remember who you are so you you actually buy into and believe this insinuation of lies and deception and untruth suggesting that you are something that can die and be affected that you should be afraid and so you're playing along with it because you don't know any better because you're confused about who you are you're mistaken about what is your real nature and you're not certain you don't know yourself this is why it's so important to the goal of the course is know thyself uh, as the course also says um, that the course is very simple it just teaches you that the truth is true so you've got to learn what is the truth what is God's truth what is the truth of my immortal self I'm gonna stick to that like glue I'm gonna throw myself into being as I was created and I'm going to reject everything else. The world you see must be denied. Um, the world is an illusion of a world. God did not create it. It has to be an illusion of a world because it shows things that aren't what they are. They're lies. All physical objects are lies. They are deceptive. And as you look upon them and you believe them, they tell you something that's not possible. Here is a broken egg. Can there be broken eggs in heaven? No, there cannot, because there can't be anything broken. So the egg is a fucking lie. Here's a dead body in a car crash. Is it possible that this can even exist and be happening? Can it be true? Am I, is my eyes deceiving me? Am I hearing things that are not really there? Am I seeing things that don't exist? Am I hallucinating? Because here I'm actually witnessing a freaking dead body in a car crash, but the truth is over here saying there can never be car crashes. As it says in one lesson, God did not create this plane crash, therefore it does not exist. God did not create the potential or the possibility for there to be car crashes. In heaven, everything is perfect and safe and protected and holy, and nothing can happen to it. There are no fucking car crashes and dead bodies. There aren't corpses in reality. There is no death and decay and rot and stench in reality. The body can be means to prove that as a symbol of eternal life that to those grown tired of the fetid stench of death um, that can symbolize eternal life and represent life and be a symbol of forgiveness a symbol of heaven through its healing it can give a testimony greater than a thousand tongues um, because it, it symbolizes life so the body, even the physical body, when the mind is being natural and not body-like and doesn't identify as a body, like a body, being like a body, it causes, it's, it's being healthy, it's being whole and healing and loving and invulnerable. And then, if it's still having a body, it puts this onto the body, and the body gets healed. And the body cannot be sick, and the body cannot even die. The mind is even capable of protecting the body, and making the body a symbol of immortality. It isn't able to be permanently, inherently immortal itself, because it's just a dream, it's just an illusion that we're repurposing. And it's really just a separation device but we're using the separation device to try to show a picture of 
health and resurrection instead of crucifixion. So when the, in the hands made gentle by his touch, the Holy Spirit lays a picture of a different you. It's a picture of a body still. This one has never suffered pain. And because of that, the body becomes healed, physically healed, to symbolize and to teach and represent innocence, harmlessness, invulnerability, all the properties of God. Sickness is a form of unforgiveness. So when you are forgiving, you should be affirming life, which is resurrection. You should be acknowledging, affirming, extending in your immortal nature, recognizing there is only innocence, sin is impossible, therefore there is no guilt. Therefore, there cannot be sickness. Sickness is another form of guilt. You can't have sickness and death because you are immortal. So you've got to compare this immortality, this invulnerability, this permanence, this impossibility of suffering, and put it alongside these pictures of crucifixion body's sick, body seems to be dead, bodies are harmed, objects are falling apart, there's crumbling, there's cracks in the sidewalk, the trees are dying, blah blah blah, cannot be true because these two things are totally, totally opposite. They are irreconcilable, they are incompatible, they can't both be true. It can't be true that there is death and there is life. So the course says either all things live forever or everything must die. No compromise is possible. Either there is eternal life and all real living things, the creations of light, which are extensions of God, which are immortal, eternal, unchangeable creations, exist or everything is dead and destroyed and the physical world is all that there is. They can't both be true. They are not compatible because they are opposites. Everything in the world takes a direction exactly opposite. So um, learn that you are immortal and align yourself with the properties of that immortality Look at the implications of being immortal, that you can't suffer, you can't have been affected by anyone. Nobody can be blamed, because that's like saying, I'm, I'm mortal and weak and I can suffer and you did this to make me suffer. That's me claiming that I'm not immortal which is an act by myself, upon myself, to attack myself. This is why in The Secret of Salvation it doesn't matter who plays the role of victim and victimizer, this is still true because when you are portraying yourself as at the effect of the world and a victim, your mind is attacking you and it's attacking itself and trying to claim that you're not invulnerable. So it is responsible for doing this to itself and it is not the other person causing this suffering it is your attempt to pretend you can die it is you playing the game of death trying to make out that you are something weak something that can be affected something that people can hurt something that can be in danger. If you believe that you're a body, and given that the body can seem to be hurt, because it's part of the illusion of mortality and death and things that can be destroyed, the body is clearly destructible and therefore not of the kingdom. God did not create the body. If you believe you're a body, you're going to go into fear. You have to be afraid because you know the body is mortal. You know that the body doesn't last and that it changes. And just the mere fact that it goes to the toilet instills terror <laughs> in you because if it can change 
and that can grow and it can alter in any way its grounds for fear because that means you're not constantly the same you can be changed some can th something can make you change so you can be attacked you can't be a body and be at peace so your sense of who am I has to be I am spirit I am not a body the body has to be meaningless to you it has to be nothing it is not yourself you are not a body otherwise you will be afraid so if you're what we get into most of the time is the state of mind of confusion fear guilt thinking that the world is dangerous believing that we're not safe being upset by things happening being lost and confused um, being disturbed being angry because stuff seems to happen that you can't seem to stop being in states of accusation and blaming people feeling like you have to avoid stuff um, being tired being weak um, having pain all these sort of states that we're in these are all evidence that you don't believe you're immortal it's all part of the same soup of I think I can die I think I can be affected I think that stuff can happen to me I think I don't have any power I think that I, I can have loss I think that I can be broken I think that I can change myself and that I can become something that other people can even change me against my will that there's a power beyond God that is capable of, of altering me and I and because it can alter me I am terrified of it because it has the ability to decide my fate um, so <laughs> a belief in not being a mortal is a belief that you are destined to die that you must die that you are something that can die and that you cannot live forever it's a belief in being mortal um, I think I'm gonna wrap up pretty soon but I want to get a few quotes in because there's some good juicy burgers of quotation <laughs> we need to chew on <laughs> uh, let's see <clears throat> Yeah. You are, I did a post recently, so I have them in my grasp. Uh, okay. You are God's son. In immortality, you live forever. Would you not return your mind to this? I am in the likeness of my creator. I cannot suffer. I cannot experience loss. And I cannot die. I am not a body. I would recognize my reality today. I will worship no idols nor raise my own self-concepts to replace myself. I am in the likeness of my creator. Love created me like itself. I will awaken from the dream that I am mortal, fallible, and full of sin, and know that I am the perfect Son of God. I will awaken from the dream that I'm having that I am mortal, that I am fallible, that I am susceptible and weak and vulnerable and threatenable, that I can be destroyed, that I can be hurt, that other people can be to blame for doing this to me. And I will know myself that I am the perfect son of God. The body can be healed as an effect of true forgiveness which is the recognition that immortality is the truth. So you cannot have been hurt or sinned against. 
The body can be healed as an effect of true forgiveness. Only that can give remembrance of immortality, which is the gift of holiness and love. What is it except a game that you play in which identity can be denied? You are as God created you, and all else but this one thing is folly to believe. In this one thought is everything set free. This one thought that you're still as God created you, you're still immortal, you will be set free from death forever. In this one truth are all illusions gone, in this one fact of sinlessness, proclaimed to be forever part of everything, the central core of its existence and its guarantee of immortality. Your sinlessness is guaranteed by God. God himself guarantees your immortality because you are immortal because of him. He has extended his immortality to you, creating you permanently and giving you eternal life. He is the guarantee that you will live forever. <clears throat> The body represents a larger dream that change is possible. This whole dream of space-time, this idea of the tiny man idea that you can change what God created and therefore you've stopped being a mortal. To change is to attain a state unlike the one in which you found yourself before. There is no change in immortality and heaven knows it not. There is no change in immortality, so you, as an immortal being, have never, ever, ever changed. You are still as God created you. It doesn't just mean you are as, as you are existing in heaven now, it also means you are still as you always have been. You've never changed. You've never, you've never stopped being perfect. Uh, let the body receive the power to represent an endless life, forever unattacked. And to your brother, let its message be, Brother, behold, behold me, brother, at your hand I live. Body can be sign of life and a promise of redemption and, and a breath of immortality. To those grown sick of breathing in the fetid scent of death, let it have healing as its purpose. Healing comes from miracles and is resurrection. Resurrection is the return to eternal life. Then it will send forth the message that it received physically and by its health and loveliness, physical health and loveliness, it will proclaim the truth and the value that it represents, symbolizes. The body is a symbol of eternal life. Let it receive the power to represent, symbolize an endless life forever unattacked. The miracle of creation has never ceased having the holy stamp of immortality upon it. Immortality is a constant state. It is as true now as it ever was or will be because it implies no change at all. You have not changed yourself. You just think that you have. You just have to remember who you really are underneath the changes that you believe in that are false. You haven't stopped being innocent. You're not capable of becoming evil. You can never be destroyed. You can never sin. My sinlessness is guaranteed by God. You've never changed. You're still your original perfect self. <clears throat> Uh, 
When you acknowledge God, you know that he has never ceased to acknowledge you, and that in his acknowledgement of you, you are immortal, lies your being. You are not sick, and you cannot die, but you can confuse yourself with things that do. Uh, the acknowledgement of your being, you can only be yourself, you can only be if that beingness is an eternal, constant, permanent state. That's what being means, it means you're there. You're just being, existing, permanently. It's your immortality is being, your being. So when we separate from, from God and we deny ourselves and we pretend to be mortal, uh, this is the Antichrist, the strange idea that there is a power past omnipotence, a place beyond the infinite, space-time, a time transcending the eternal. Here the world of idols, bodies, uh, the world of bodies is the world of sin. Here the world of idols has been set by the idea that this power and this place and this time are given form and shape the world where the impossible has happened. This is literally what I've just been talking about, that we've made a world that is a picture of the crucifixion of God's Son and, and every single physical object attempts to show proof that impossible things are happening. Everything around you that the body can see is a lie. It is an appearance of an illusion. It is nothing pretending to be something, testifying to a possibility that isn't possible if you are immortal. It is against the will of God. It is uh, the opposite of God's nature. Here in this world, the deathless come to die. <laughs> the all-encompassing to suffer loss. The timeless to be made the slaves of time. Here does the changeless change. The peace of God, forever given to all living things, living things meaning eternal life, things, children of God, not fricking potatoes, uh, give way to chaos. And the Son of God, as perfect, sinless, and loving as his Father, has come to hate a little while, to suffer pain, and finally to die. This is the Antichrist, this is being against Christ, being opposite Christ's nature. Christ is immortal, you are Christ, you are immortal. We're try you've tried to be not Christ and you're trying to make yourself look like you can be destroyed because you're trying to be the Antichrist. You're trying to be a devil, you're trying to be evil, you're trying to be non-existent. And um, this is the strange idea. The deathless come here to die, all-encompassing to suffer loss, timelessness to be made slaves of time, change, changelessness to be changed. Um, this is the bullshit that we're living, that we're trying to do, that we're trying to pull off a stunt. <laughs> Sickness is a way of demonstrating that you can be hurt. It is a witness to your frailty, your vulnerability, and your extreme need to depend on external guidance. So believing you're a body and believing the body can be attacked is an attempt to prove you can be hurt. But you can't be hurt because you're immortal. So it's an attempt to prove that you're not immortal. If you are suffering or sick or in pain or unhappy or losing in any way, any kind of lack, any kind of deprivation, you are trying to suffer. You're trying not to be yourself and you're trying to prove that you are not 
as God created you. You who perceive yourself as weak and frail, with futile hopes and devastated dreams, born but to die, to weep and suffer pain, hear this. All power is given you in heaven, earth and heaven. There is nothing that you cannot do. You play the game of death, of being helpless, pitifully tied to dissolution in a world which shows no mercy to you. You play the game of death and you have all power because you share God's power because God is all powerful. You are an immortal being that can never be affected. You can never die. You can never be sick. So instead, you perceive yourself to be weak and frail and futile hopes and devastated dreams, born to die, weeping, suffering pain, being sick, being destructible, trying to pull off the faking of your own death in an attempt to deny that you have eternal life that you're not yourself, that you've become destructible, that you're not constructive, that you're not creative, that you don't live forever. That it's, it's like uh, it's a scapegoating mechanism where you believe that um, you make yourself out to be destructible or something that can seem to be destroyed, a picture of a body, and then at the same time you hide the fact that you've done this and you blame it on something else to disguise that you're the one who's faking the death so that people won't figure out that you're the one who made it happen so that you can accuse someone else and therefore project your guilt and escape from your guilt and as Jesus says elsewhere, that you're willing to pay the cost of death in order to get away with this. That when you make your body die, you're actually saying, I'm willing to die if it means, brother, at your hand I die and I can accuse you of being the cause of me. To demonstrate that I am not causal because I'm not immortal. So we, we deliberately make the body die to try to pull off this lie that you have been killed by someone other than yourself, testifying that you don't live forever. And here's Jesus saying, you are all powerful. You are immortal and you share the power of God and there's nothing you cannot do and therefore you can get yourself out of all of this shit. You can reverse all sickness, you can raise the dead, you can undo suffering, you can end all suffering with your miracles and you can resurrect and you can resume being Christ and you can live forever. Reality is changeless and this is what makes it real and keeps it separate from all appearances. It must transcend all form to be itself. It cannot change. You are real. You can't change. You've never changed. That's why you're still as God created you. That's why you're innocent. That's why you cannot blame anyone or anything because nothing has ever happened to you. You're still unchanged. Nothing has ever happened to you. This is forgiveness. Thus is the body healed by miracles because they show that the mind that made sickness and employed the body to be a victim or an effect of what it made. Sickness is anger taken out upon the body so that it will suffer pain. If you harbor attack thoughts, you yield to judgment, you've made a bodily identity which will attack the body because the mind is sick. Uh, the mind that thinks it is a body is sick indeed. Um, the mind makes its decision because it makes all decisions responsible for the body's condition. 
sicknesses and elections, sicknesses of problem solving approach, sicknesses idolatry, belief that power can be taken from you, sickness is a defense against the truth, sickness is a decision, uh, a broken body shows the mind has not been healed, sick bodies remain accusers, um, all forms of sickness are physical expressions of the fear of awakening, attempts to reinforce unconsciousness out of the fear of consciousness, trying not to know by rendering the faculties of knowing ineffectual, trying to suppress yourself and pretend you don't exist. Did God create the mortal and the corruptible? What use has God's beloved son for what must die? There can be no order of difficulty in healing merely because all sickness is illusion. Healing never needed by the truth demonstrates that sickness is not real. Swear not to die, you holy son of God. You make a bargain that you cannot keep, meaning that you're attempting to prove that you can die when you can't. The son of life cannot be killed. He is immortal as his father. What he is cannot be changed. He is the only thing in all the universe that must be one. Swear not to die, you holy son of God. You've made a bargain that you cannot keep. The son of life cannot be killed. He is immortal as his father. What he is cannot be changed. He is the only thing in all the universe that must be one. You are not sick and you cannot die. You are immortal. Live it. Believe it, side with it, align with it, accept it as true, identify with it, make it your whole life. Be only that. Know yourself as immortal. Be as God created you and nothing else. Accept your inheritance from God. Do not have anything else. Don't try to make anything else. Be at peace with who you really are. You can never die. You will live forever because God says so. <sighs> and therefore you have nothing to fear and you can be at peace. Carry on being yourself. Don't change. Don't even change just be as you were created you're already perfect you don't need anything just be yourself god bless